what is vendor subrange and why do we require a vendor subrange so vendor subrange is also not a data which you will require to maintain each and every place it's completely scenario based it it start coming it uh, from the functionalities where basically the retail based uh, systems are there there it has been used but now it is available you can use it for any industry scenario but where it is applicable not where everywhere you will be maintaining it where it will be applicable so in vendor sub range what we say that a vendor is having a set of materials right vendor is having a set of materials let's say he is delivering it to you paints and he's also delivering it to you chemicals under the paint category he is having different 200 products under the chemical category he is also having different 300 products but that is the two high level categories which he has he has a paint category and he has a chemical category right now you are having a three plants plant P1, plant P2, plant P3. And this vendor, if you require the paints, he is having a uh, paint warehouse. From here, he would be supplying the paint, whether P1, whether P2, or whether P3, paint would be supplied from here. And then he has a chemical warehouse. The chemical warehouse, the supplying would be happening from here. Right? Now, if you want to maintain some specific data for this paints, okay, for this particularly paints, you want to maintain the specific data. Now, the things are not changing based on the plant. P1 is buying, P2 is buying, or P3 is buying. Things are changing that what subcategory of material vendor is selling. If you are buying paints for, from the vendor, the things will get changed. If you buy chemicals from the vendor, the things will get changed. Okay. So for all the paints, if you are buying the paints, all the paints, the delivery time is 10 days. And all the chemicals, the delivery time is 15 days. Right. So if you define the delivery time, delivery time, you can maintain it at the vendor level. Purchase org level. Purchase org level, if you will define, you will be having a question whether I define 10 days, whether I define a 15 days, right? You can go ahead and define it at the, try to define it at the plant level, which we just discussed it. Plant level also, you would be having a question. Some materials is coming at 10 days. Some materials are coming at 15 days. So shall I define 10 days or shall I define 15 days? Or you can say that I will define it as a PIR. Purchase info record level. We are basically, uh, I would be able to define the particular material coming from the particular vendor. It would come as a 10 days, 15 days. There I will be able to define it. That's these 200 materials need to come in 10 days. And these 300 materials need to come in 15 days. But I need to maintain 500 entries. But I need to maintain 500 entries, right? So what you can do, PIR you can maintain, but it's a bulk entries you need to maintain. In this case, we can say that I create a vendor sub range. VSR is equal to paint and VSR is equal to chemical. Two sub ranges I have maintained, and then I would be maintaining a data under these sub ranges. I would be maintaining the data under this sub range under this sub range then i can also maintain my pir pir also rather than maintaining for each individual material i would be able to maintain my pir at for the paints sub range what should be the data for paints what should be the data for chemical sub range so basically i have grouped the materials on the sub range level and i would be able to maintain the data at sub range level let's also quickly see i hope that would be clarifying you that where actually vendor subranges are required or where the creating a vendor subrange will help you out. 